Welcome again. Today we return to look at the skill testing for association between two species using the chi-squared test and then recognizing and interpreting statistical significance specifically with respect to this chi-squared test. Now we've looked at the test in two earlier investigations one in which we went into moss habitat to search for whether mosses within their habitat are found more in the well-drained areas of their habitat and less so in the waterlogged or less well-drained areas. And secondly, we considered the use of the 2 times 2 contingency table and the chi-squared test in the Global Lichen Project as we are currently searching for an association between clean air and the presence of lichens on tree trunks. In today's activity though, we focus specifically on the skill as given in the IB Biology Guide for first exams in 2016, testing for association between two species using the chi-squared test. But in addition to that, we seek to clarify the use of the quadrat in obtaining this data. So let's take a look at this online lesson which seeks to model the use of the quadrat in looking for an association between two plant species in a field. Two high school biology students were observing a garden with sunflowers, Helianthus anus and Gazania, Gazania ringens. They considered if there was any evidence of a positive association between the two plants or a negative association or no association whatsoever. So they gathered some materials and they went out into the field to take 25 random samples using a one square meter quadrat. Here is a schematic representation of what the garden looked like with Helianthus anus, the sunflower, represented by yellow dots and Gazania ringens, Gazania represented by orange dots. A quadrat is a square frame. It could be made of wood, PVC pipe, or simply four sticks and some string. This particular quadrat is one square meter in size. Using a measuring tape, the students set up an imaginary grid in the 15 meter by 11 meter area of the plot. Next, they accessed a random number generator on their computers to generate a random x-coordinate and a random y-coordinate. Using the coordinates 10, 4, they took this sample. 10 on the x-axis, 4 on the y-axis. With this point here being identified and the quadrat placed on the upper right-hand area of that point to occupy one square meter. In this particular sample, we can see one single gazania plant being present within the one square meter plot. So the student would note that gazania was present, but sunflowers absent. In this way, they would begin to fill out this two times two contingency table with the first check going in to this box, Gazania present, Sunflower absent. They would then go on to generate some more random coordinates and to determine whether Gazania and Sunflower are present together and to determine what box to check on the contingency table. A minimum of 20 trials is required for the validity of the statistical significance test, the chi-squared test, after taking 25 random samples. This is what the contingency table looked like. Here you can see the combined total of 25 for the 25 samples taken from the ornamental plot. In order to make a valid scientific conclusion about association, whether that association be positive or negative, or lack of association, a statistical test of significance must be completed. 
in this case, the chi-squared test is appropriate. And the first step in completing this test is to convert observed values into expected values. To calculate the expected values, this formula is used. The row total, 12 in this first case, is divided by the combined total, 25, and then multiplied by the column total of 6. This would come to 2.88, and it would be the expected value for this box. A similar procedure is carried out to determine each of the other three expected values. Do your own calculations and see if you agree with these three expected values. The next step in the manual completion of the chi-squared test requires a table like this, including the observed value, the expected value, observed minus expected, observed minus expected squared, and finally, observed minus expected squared divided by E. This is known as the chi-squared formula. Next, all of the values in the final column are summed up. The sum of this column gives the final value for chi-squared. In this case, chi-squared comes to 0 0.0127. The next step requires a table of critical values for chi-squared and the value of 0 0.0127 must be located within this table. But before this can be done, the degree of freedom must be calculated, df. To calculate the degree of freedom, this formula is used. Rows minus 1, and here we can see 2 rows, 2 minus 1 comes to 1. Columns minus 1, and here we can see 2 columns. 2 minus 1 comes to 1. 1 times 1 equals 1. So the degree of freedom for this 2 times 2 contingency table is 1. Returning to the critical values for the chi-squared distribution, and recalling that chi-squared is equal to 0 0.0127, and that the degree of freedom is 1, we realize that even though this number 0 0.0127 is not present on the table, it should lie somewhere in this region, indicating that p, the probability, is greater than 0.9. Put another way, we can say that the outcome of this investigation is more than 90% likely, with the p-value between 0.9 and 0.975. And what this means is that there is about a 95% chance of these results and therefore there is no association between sunflowers and gazania. A p-value of less than 0 0.05 would have suggested that there is some association between sunflower and gazania, literally meaning that the chance of getting that kind of data that would give us a p-value of 0 0.05 or less is 5% or less and scientific convention requires us to accept that there is association when we get a p-value of less than 0 0.05. But when we get a p-value that is much higher than 0 0.05, higher than 0 0.9, then we certainly can say with confidence that there is no association between sunflowers and gazania in the ornamental plot. Another way of laying out the whole scenario is to say that the null hypothesis is supported, which is the idea that there is no association between sunflowers and gazania. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then we say that the alternative hypothesis is supported, and sunflowers and gazania are positively or negatively associated. A positive association would mean very high numbers in this box, sunflower present, gazania present, and very low numbers in this box. When this kind of data is present and the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then we say that there's a positive association. For a negative association, this value would be quite high, sunflower absent, gazania present, and this value also 
would be quite high. If these two values are high, and these two are significantly lower, and the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then we say that there is a negative association. In an earlier investigation, we took on this research question to investigate association between moss and soil drainage. And you can click here for the protocol that we followed in that investigation. And you can click here for the Global Lichen Project, where we also plan to use a 2 times 2 contingency table and the chi-squared test.